So today we are going to continue with part 32, crowd for state. So where are we currently? We've actually been able to set up the parameters and we've done crowd for country. Crowd means create, read, uh, create, uh, create, read, update and delete. Um, I think I got it, I can't remember. So we've done it for country, we can add new country, we can edit a country, we can delete a country, we can view the details of a country. We now want to do exactly the same thing for state and one thing I'm going to explain in case of state is that I want to show you how to load a drop down when you want to add a new country, you want to, uh, a new state, you want to select the country where the state belongs. And also if you, if you show up the edit page for state, it's going to uh, load the drop down, but it's going to pre-select the particular state, uh, the particular country in question or for that particular record. So I'm going to show you how to load a drop down in this class. So this is where we are, part 32, and there are a whole lot of things we have to cover, possibly in the next two or three weeks. And later on, I think uh, we have more uh, advanced topics. For instance, we're going to be talking about query annotation, right next to your query in JPA repository, talking about displaying pop-up, spring security, role-based authorization, deploying to Heroku, AWS, and so on. So, if you know some of these things and you want to actually wait till this time when I'm going to be explaining the advanced topic, you can also subscribe to my channel and also activate notifications so that when the particular topic you want is updated, you get notified immediately. So because this is a tutorial that covers a whole lot. Okay, so let's go ahead to get started. So this is where we are, parameters home, and we have set up country. So now I want us to set up for state. For state, we don't have nothing, as you can see right here. So what we will do now is very easy. We are going to copy everything from country onto the state, and then we are going to modify it to fit the state model. So what I'm saying in effect is I'm going to simply duplicate this tree, one, two, three, four. This is for, uh, for country, I'm going to duplicate it for state. And we're also going to go to the controllers. We have a country controller here. We're going to also copy the content of the country controller from here onto the state controller and then change your names. So let me just show you how to do this. If you look at the state service, it's about the same like the country service. So I think I copied. So copy and paste and change your names to state. But in case of the controller, let me copy from the country controller and take it over to the state controller and then we are going to change up a few things uh, after now. So let me do all the copying and pasting and then I now explain to you how it works. Okay, so I've completed copying and pasting. So you can have, you can see the state add, state details, state edit and state uh, list, which is states. So I'm not calling it state list, now I'm calling it states. So in case you call it state list, it's okay, but it's better you just call it states. You know, so and I also copied the controller and edit and modified it. So let's start from the most important thing: the drop down. When you want to display a drop down, you first want to send the list of items you want to display across to the drop down. So when we are going to be adding a new state, we are going to display the state add, um, the state add uh, HTML template. And that's what is exactly happening here. When we go to slash parameters slash state add, we are going to have return state add, which is the form. Okay. Now this add model attribute here is actually a function I have written here that is going to simply add the list of states and also the list of countries to the model that is going to be sent to the UI. Because if you want to add a state, you need to have a list of countries as well that's going to display on the dropdown. So we want to send a list of countries as well. So what's happening here is actually these two lines here, you can actually, I normally before now add it uh, right here. Okay, instead of saying model attribute add, you can add these two lines right here is also okay. But since I want to avoid repetition, I have to put them in a different function that makes the code more readable and, uh, and makes the code simpler. 
So take some time to get your head around it. Okay, so let's now go to the the state ads. I'm going to show you a drop down list I've also added. So this is the state ad, and this we have the select state uh, select list. The select list has option here that says select. So when you have the drop down list. The first thing that displays there is select because we are talking about adding a new country. So you don't want to press select any state. So the first option you want to display when you're adding new is to display select. Under it, when you now drop down, you now have remaining options here. And this option is going to say for each country in countries, and remember I told you that the country was signed from the controller through the model. For each country in country, the value is going to be country ID and the text is going to be the country dot description. Now you need to pay attention to this name of the select statement. So look at this line I highlighted here. It says name is equal to country ID. Country ID all in lowercase. Remember, when I was building the model, I used the method of using a lowercase to indicate the foreign key field in, the, uh, in, the, in one of the tables. So if I go to the model, models here, and go to uh, 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 state, you can see that we have many to one country but we also have another private integer field called country ID right here. So this is what we are using as the name of the select list. So I'm going to close everything. Now, this is just one aspect. The second aspect that is a bit tricky is when you display a DIT uh, state. When you display a date state, you want to pre-select the country that is associated with that state. So if I go to the edit uh, form for the state, so this is the edit, I want you to take note of what is happening here. So what is happening here is we are going to be also setting the selected attributes of the option uh, uh, tag. So when you, when you have the option tag here, we have th each, which we have in add, we also have th uh, text, but this time we now need th value. We, we also, sorry, we, we now need th selected. So what's happening here is saying that selected is equal to if the country in the list, the ID of the country is in the, in the list, equals to the ID of the country that the state belongs, that the current state belongs, then select it that is return true else return false so what it means is if there is a country that the state uh, belongs to that is in the list is going to the selected of that particular country is going to be true and that is exactly what is happening here so this is a pattern to use when we are editing a record that has dropped down we are going to use Select date, and you're going to say um, the ID of the from the list equals compared to the ID of the current record, and we are going to set to true, else false. This is a tenary operator. I'm sure you know about it. Else, look at my uh, tutorial on Java. You can learn about tenary operators in Java. And what am I forgetting? Now the details page. The details is exactly the same as the edit, but is simply not editable. So one thing to do to make uh, the, the to make the fields not editable is to set them as read only or to set them as disabled. Once you set them as read only, then it means that those items or those values in those fields they are just read only, but they can communicate with the server. They can be sent back to the to the server, but they are read only, meaning that user in the front end cannot tamper with them. But if they are disabled, it means that those values will never be signed uh, back to the server. So uh, let me just kind of do one or two here. I'm going to just say read only here. And of course, you can just do the remaining one yourself, read only. 
There's something else I want to show you that is very, very important. But before I show you, let's run this application first to see how it works. So I'm going to refresh this page and rerun it. All right. So I think it started uh, well. Let me now go to pop, uh, the application here. I'm going to first refresh this page and I'm going to state. Okay, so now the state now works. Now if I click on new state, I can see that the country is displayed. And I want to add a new state in, in the United States. And that state is going to be, for instance, uh, new, uh, let's say, Arizona. And the capital is Arizona. I don't know, but uh, let me just leave it this way. A-R-I, and the details is Arizona. And I'm going to simply click on save and you can see that the state added correctly. Now, if I click on the details uh, here, which is this one, you can see it doesn't display uh, well. So that's a problem I'm going to try to troubleshoot. Okay, so let me try the state details again and I think now it works. So, but now I did not, I've forgotten to kind of uh, set this field to read only, okay? So please take some time to, this is a homework for you now, take some time to set the fields and the state details to read only, uh, just like I have this ID to be read only. So set the other fields to read only as well. And also I've disabled the save button for the state. And just one final thing I want to show you before I end this class. This is very important because it's kind of optional but it's something you need to know. When you are going from the list of states to the edits or the details, you want to avoid replicating the same code base. So when you have a button that says edit and you have another button that says details, they are going to go to the same controller method because we want to simply select one single state and display it on the UI. So in the controller method, the controller method is going to kind of understand whether you want details or you want um, or, or edit page. So let me just show you what this means. So this is the method and now if you look at the URL mapping, you see the up here, the up represent either edit or details, okay? Yeah, so when we have the state list now, uh, we can now, uh, you can now see here we have details. When we click on the details button, we have details here. And when we click on the edit, we have edit here for delete, we have delete. So the controller is going to check what is there, whether it's edit or details, and it's going to extract it as the up here. So once it's up, you can see state details or state edit. So in case of state details, you can see the names of the forms corresponds. Yeah, it's going to be concatenated with this, with the op. Op can be a detail detail. So I'm going to stop here. We are done with the states now. And then the next part we are going to now check. Let me see. So we've completed this. So I'm going to kind of remove it from here. We are going to now do CRUD on location. What I'm going to do is to help you to see how you can filter a select list based on another select list. So if you select a drop down item, you want to filter the next drop down item based on the currently selected drop down list. list. So I'm going to stop here. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. If you actually know some of these things, you can subscribe so that when I do the most of the advanced topics, uh, you can actually get notified as well. So I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.